Hey, our review family, keep it I keep it tight. My name is Jay Morris, the review guy reviewing music for the love of music, and I'm back again to bring you another video. And in this one, I'm going to be covering the brand new Dance Gavin Dance record entitled Afterburner. This is the ninth studio length album by the Sacramento, California metal and rock band Dance Gavin Dance. A record that, based on the singles, I was so excited to talk about. I've been covering them periodically in both track review and metal track roundup. And a lot of people might actually not know this, but Dance Gavin Dance is one of my favorite bands. Their sound has almost always exclusively consisted of an eclectic blending of post-hardcore, math rock, and progressive rock. But in the past decade, Dance Gavin Dance has shifted considerably away from their initial roots in a pretty strong fashion. They've become much more prone to technicality and more of a straightforward progressive rock and mathcore way. Their compositions still do remain impressively all over the place, but they just feel more stable and more accessible and easy to consume nowadays. And alongside the blunter approach to songwriting, melodicism has concurrently appeared in higher dosages than ever prior. One of the most major differences, probably the most major difference, is the introduction of Tillian Pearson into the band in the early 2010s, replacing Johnny Craig as the lead clean vocalist. And this is the first trace of where you can see the band's style changing a lot. And honestly, it's apples and oranges at this point. Whether whether you prefer the Johnny Craig era of Dance Gavin Dance or the Tillian era, you can't deny the fact that Tillian has had such a major impact on the band, similar to kind of what Jordan Fish did with Bring Me the Horizon when he stepped on the Semp Eternal era. Nowadays in Dance Gavin Dance, vocal passages are much more clean and the soaring choruses really come through a lot, and sometimes verses can roll along in a very saccharine tone. I mean, even the four singles that were dropped in anticipation for this record seemed like a bit of a progression from their 2018 record Artificial Selection, which ended up being an album of the year contender for me, but any really, really longtime fans of the channel will understand that I praised the hell out of that record. Much like that record, four singles dropped in anticipation, showcasing an even more refined sound than was present on their last album. Still working with longtime collaborative producer Chris Crummett, it still has the DGD print on it while turning down the cleanliness a little bit. I mean, it's no secret that Dance Guy and Dance is a very sterile band overall. That being said, this record's resonance riff-wise, whether it be tapping, whether it be riffing out, whether it be the sweeps, feels a lot less glitzy. The drums don't even seem to have the same sheen as beforehand. And I'm a bit of a fence sitter on that, but it is noticeable enough to make me a little bit sad as I really did feel like Artificial Selection was their peak of production when it comes to their general mix. I think it complemented their sound in such a snug way that I don't see why they would have really wanted to change it that much or break it that much. Why try to fix something if it's not broken in the first place? That's the motto. On the flip side, there are more layers of complexity on this record. One thing I will get to later on in this review is there is a rap section. There's a rap section. The inclusion of Latin rock elements into the instrumentation and a lot more funk-isms, I would say. Like, they were already very funky and groovy. I don't think anyone would deny that, but it's being brought into their sound into the forefront more than ever, I'd say. Colin Tomiento Global, which directly translates to Global Heating, I believe. It has an entirely Spanish sung chorus as well as outro. I'm not sure if Tillian has any Hispanic in him or any sort of Spanish origin within him, but I will say that he doesn't lose any of his enunciation or his power is what really surprised me. I mean, if he is a native speaker, good on him. He works perfectly, but if not, if he's a non-native speaker, Good on him. Power doesn't diminish at all. The swapping of languages doesn't damage his grit whatsoever during this transition, and that's impressive considering his natural high chords. And yes, like I said, funk makes a large imprint here. Very large. It leaves a big footprint. <laughs> Take the single Three Wishes. So many of the rhythms coming out of this guitar have a specific level of groove to them. Another example is the opening track, Prisoner, one of the most well-produced and well-constructed tracks on the entire record, and one of my personal favorites. The opening riff that repeats on numerous occasions and the background harmonies that are formulated in the bridge leading into the chorus and especially on the chorus itself might appear hidden on first listen and that generally is a huge deterrent 
determining factor in why I enjoy Dance Gavin Dance's progression in general and this record, their knack for including technicality subtly, very subtly. And with those funkisms coming through in this record's entirety, it leaves a lot of sections sounding not too unlike what you could get from, say, like a Chon record. And can I just say that Tillian and John Mess continue to be one of the most versatile and unique duos, in my opinion, one of the best, if not the best, in metal. The way they can complement each other is through the roof. Tillian's raspy, high falsetto vocals that are pretty much straight out of like a Seosin record or a hyper-realistic Jesse Cash of era, combined with John Mess's crazed delivery, making him sound like an escaped convict half the time. The two really do give this band so much life and so much more power than they necessarily could have otherwise. And without them, I don't think it would be nearly as intriguing of a project. But that's true of every Dance Gavin Dance record. Nothing's new here. Now, up until this point, I have talked very positively about this record, of course. And overall, I do enjoy this record quite a bit. However, there are some glaring things that I do want to address, both large scale and minor that I do want to discuss in this review. As someone that does have a background with audio engineering, I want to say something. At times, the vocals are flat out mixed too loud. They are too high in the mix. Tillian's natural register has a high end frequency, and when it isn't mixed, compressed with some sort of de -esser or some sort of equalization feature put on it to lower in the mix to not be so piercing, a sharp register is going to naturally attract a piercing sound to it and is going to naturally be higher in the mix without even having any effects, without even having any sort of amplification on it, which is going to result in it standing out in the track so much more from a production standpoint. And John Mess, who is doing rough, rigid vocals, he's even lower in the mix. That's because he is in more of a low end frequency, even though he is a little bit more shrieked, a little bit more throaty, because he's so high up in the register, he's like in the head voice so much of the time. He comes through sounding very shrill, and that is solely due to the way his vocals are mixed on numerous tracks. Having such a volume differential doesn't really do it many favors on many tracks here, and maybe that's the type of thing that is nitpicky, maybe it's the type of thing that only I notice or other certain people notice, but it's something that I definitely did take note of. It's just a perception type thing, and maybe I'm completely wrong, but that's just my opinion. Night Sway, the track Night Sway is a good example of what I'm trying to illustrate here. John Mess is not nearly as loud, but he has the rougher vocals. The track is short, and I enjoy it for the most part, but Tillian is just mixed way too high, especially when the instrumentation goes a little bit quieter. That really does cause a divide, because when the instrumentation is louder, you can kind of get away with having something stand out in the mix, but it really is grating. Generally, Dance Gavin Dance is great at sweeter tracks with more of a lighter melodic tone, but the track parody catharsis just isn't doing much for me. The cycling between the heavier and softer instrumentation on this track just doesn't work as well as it does pretty much anywhere else on the record here. By comparison, it's not terrible, it's just worse than the other things here in my opinion. John Mess loses the narrative a bit on this track by trying to utilize his rough vocals in a way that holds tone and holds pitch. He's almost trying to scream, sing, think Sam Carter of Architects, but not really high in the register. And I don't think it does any favors for him. And the little leading vocals that pop in with that deep low end effect thrown on them was an odd choice for me. And this is all a shame because I generally do enjoy this track. And that really just is lyrically for the most part. That's the thing here. Quite a few tracks here read to me as giving with one hand, taking with the other. And I unfortunately don't think it's as watertight as some of their past material or especially even Artificial Selection, which is easily top three in their catalog for me. I mean, for the most part, this track listing runs tight, but some tracks just stick out like a sore thumb as being subpar by their own standards. My negativity regarding this record pretty much only lies with some of the songwriting choices and the general production and balance on a couple tracks here. It's not some big thing that I want to pan the record for. I mean, I want to be honest, the first first minute of parallels it gets on my nerves. I can't explain why. Easily some of the weakest vocal passages that Tillian has ever had. And both instrumentally, this just exudes the aura that not much was put into this as an introduction. That being said, the back half, for the most part, is extremely strong. The single Strawberry's Wake illustrates that this band is great at blending melodicism and heaviness so much better than parody catharsis. And a prime example of how their generally absurd and zany musical style works so well. Say Hi is 
so heavy at times it's almost straight up metalcore. If it wasn't for the instrumental toning down a bit and the chorus soaring as Dance Gavin Dance usually does in a non-metalcore way, more of a post-hardcore way, more of a pop-punk way, the post-hardcore metalcore blend here is undeniable. And it is most certainly the heaviest track on the record. Andrew Wells of the band Idola appears on the track Nothing Shameful, which does seem to borrow some of the instrumental patterns from Prisoner. Andrew fits so perfectly on this track that it makes me want to hear more of him collaborating with Dance Gavin Dance in the future. Hands down, 100%. Get him on a future record. Get him on multiple tracks if you want. He blends in so well with Tillian's background vocals, it's insane. Into the Sunset is a fine closer, if not a weak one. There's a prog rock rap break at the end, with Will Swan doing rap vocals. I mean, I'm perfectly fine with this. I'm perfectly happy with it. It's, this inclusion is so abstract. It's actually un, it's unreasonably and unintentionally hilarious. That's what I've made of it after hearing it a couple times. And we can officially say there's been a Dance Gavin dance track that's included the N word. That, that is, that's a landmark. That, that is something that I don't think anyone could have anticipated. And I think he's, he is half African American, so I think it's, it's, it's fine. <laughs> Either way, this is a good Dance Gavin Dance record with considerable flaws, more so than artificial selection in my opinion, but a record that nonetheless I did enjoy quite a lot. I mean, to be fair, this closer is basically just a pretty one-dimensional, one-note Dance Gavin dance track with a rap break, but maybe consistency is keen. Up until this point, if you haven't been a fan of them, this might not necessarily make you become a diehard fan, but if you like the funkisms and melodicism they've displayed in the past and wanted more of that, check it out. Either way, I'm going to be giving this album a 7 out of 10. And that is a wrap. Have you heard this new Dance Gavin Dance record after Burner? If you have, let me know in the comment section below what you thought about it. I would love to discuss a record with you. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to join the review family today and smash that notification bell to be notified of my future uploads. You know who it is. My name is Jay Morse, the review guy, and I'm signing off saying, Baby, we can both explore.